Hey guys, Dylan Allen from Allen Endurance Coaching. Today we're talking about how to approach your first race of any particular distance. Just the mindset you should have going into it. So when we're thinking about trying our hand at a new race distance or um, kind of a new approach to racing or getting back into it, <clears throat> there's a couple of things we want to kind of think about. Um, and this is the advice I give to my clients. Uh, I get and whether this are, these are experienced runners or triathletes or folks that are brand spanking new. Um, if it's their first time really going after a particular race distance or kind of event. Um, my number one piece of advice to everybody, especially the really competitive guys, is to try to not be super competitive and have a good time. Um, because we all, fundamentally, the reason why we're doing it, hopefully, is because we're enjoying it, right? And so if we're not having a good time and we're not prioritizing that, if we're too competitive about it, and the wheels come off and we have a bad day, we're gonna end up hating that event. And we're gonna want to never do it again. And that's like the biggest thing I want anyone to avoid the first time doing a new, uh, a new event or new distance. Um, so yeah, priority number one is to have fun. That way we'll wanna come back and do it again. You can always get PR, another PR later. You can always come back and get a qualifier later. But that first time, that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be to experience the event and enjoy it. For most folks, this isn't really that big of a deal, but for the really competitive uh, athletes out there, it can be. Um, especially folks that are you know, competitive runners or used to be competitive runners, stepping up to their first marathon or stepping up to their first full Ironman or even first half Ironman. Like, I mean, the, the races are just long enough or your first ultra trail race, whatever. The races are long enough that the odds of something going wrong just go up, right? If you're running a mile, um, doing a mile race, and as much as the mile is the most painful race in existence, it is, it is by far and away the most uncomfortable race I've ever been in, is the one mile run. But it hurt, the intensity is so high that it is extremely uncomfortable. But by the point in the race it's getting really uncomfortable, you know that you're only going to have to meet, you're only going to have to put up with that discomfort for a couple of more minutes. But when you get to those longer races and your brain's not functioning great, um, and so you can kind of get trapped in that kind of downward spiral of negative thinking that can happen when you run out of blood sugar. And then something goes wrong, uh, you know, whether it's just you're hitting a wall and the wheels come off and you slow way down, or you had some little niggle creep up on you and become an issue, or you weren't thinking clearly and it's trail race and you made a wrong turn and you're off course and you have no idea how to get back. First time doing it, have a good time. It's your first half marathon, first marathon, first half Ironman, or enjoy the day. You know, you can set goals, performance goals, but goal number one should always be to enjoy yourself. And along those lines, the second thing is to set multiple goals. And this is a mistake a lot of ex-athletes make when they start kind of getting back into things, is if you come from a competitive background where you are racing instead of time trialing, um, a lot of times we have this goal of, yeah, yeah, I should be able to run X time. Why not? Um, and so if we set multiple goals of, you know, I want to have this finish time. I want to finish this place. I want to finish in this time. That's a little slower, but if things don't work out quite right, I think I can do this. And maybe I want to finish like age group in, you know, some position in my age group. And then maybe another goal time that's a little bit slower in case 
you know, the wheels come off and it's not ideal, but that's still doable even if I'm really struggling. And at the bottom, we should always have two goals. One, don't get hurt. And two, uh, finish um, in that order. Because get, not getting hurt should be a higher priority than finishing. Always. Um, I guess there could be like the odd exception if you're like at the Olympics or something. But I'm assuming if you're watching my YouTube channel, you're not in that category. So um, if you are, that's awesome. Tell me how it goes. Um, leave a comment with what you think of, about that. But um, for most of us mere mortals, the uh, not getting hurt uh, should be on the goal list. And the reason why is so that if we're having a really bad day or it's way hotter than we expected or way colder or we roll our ankle doing a trail run or we take a hard dive on the bike and doing a, doing a triathlon, um, having that be on the goal list can help prevent us from making a stupid decision to keep pushing and keep going when we should pull the plug. Because there's always another race. Um, you, you can always race again. Even for those big races like big hard marathons or ultras or full, tri full Ironmans, like, you can do another one. Um, yeah, it may be a while, before, you know, in order to actually get in a proper training block and get recovered and, you know, it's not cheap to do it again, but you can do it again. Um, I think, uh, and so having that on the goal list that not getting hurt is important. Uh, because it makes it so that we don't get in a position where we cannot do another one because of some kind of permanent injury we've done to ourselves. So having multiple goals set up um, helps us have a better day, which kind of goes back to that first key point of having a good time. Because, you know, things happen, especially in long races. The longer a race is, duration-wise, the more opportunity there is for something to go wrong. Um you know, go back to the mile race of the 5K. It's short enough that even if you're having a bad day, you're not going to have to suffer for that long. The odds of you doing something really dumb and getting seriously injured are pretty low. I've seen it happen. Um, but the odds are much lower than a race that lasts two and a half or three or six or 17 hours or 24 plus hours. Like, it's just, it's long enough that the odds of something happening go up. Um, because it's really a function of, you know, the odds of something not happening in this minute is really small, but if you get enough of those minutes, those odds stack up. Eventually something's going to go wrong the longer the race is. Um, and so by having multiple goals, it allows us to be like, okay, well, the wheels came off. We're not going to hit the A goal. Let's tr go for the B goal. Um, or, oh, no, like we're not going to hit the B goal focus on that seagull and then you know down at the bottom we have don't get hurt and finish um and you know that way no matter what um we have we've met our goal and even if we have to pull the plug we've met our goal of not getting hurt that way the day is maybe not as as successful as we want it to be but it's not a complete failure and then here allows us to walk away from the event going, yeah, okay, like, I could do that again. I may need to come back for revenge on this particular course, uh, Tulsa, um, but, uh, you know, like, you can do it again. You could go do another one somewhere else. You could do that particular race again. Um, you know, but you can come back and do it again. Number three, don't worry about absolutely crushing the race. Um, because if, all you're focused about is that kind of that A goal of um, first marathon, I want to get a Boston qualifier. Uh, or, or I want to run that super fast 5K. Or I want to qualify for Kona. Um, what happens when you get halfway through the race and you're like, it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm not, not going to get there. Um, you're either one, you're going to do something you shouldn't do, which is continue to keep pushing super hard, um, harder than your fitness will allow you to successfully accomplish. And then you're going to be really beat up afterwards and you're not going to have a good time and 
again, if you're not having a good time while you're there. Instead of thinking about absolutely crushing the race, if it's your first time doing it, if we're instead thinking about having that good time, you can still run a really good time. You can still get that A goal and B goal, whatever. But if we're focused on the experience, then we'll be more likely to have a good experience. And realistically, if we're having a good time, we're probably going to finish at a decent time. Uh, you know, a prime example of this for me personally was last year in Boston, um, 2018. That was, for those of you who don't know, it was like 30 degrees, torrential downpour the whole day. So it was that wind chill of like 22 or 24, 30 mile an hour headwind the whole way. Like, if the weather was a complete joke, like there was no way I was going to run a good time. There's no way I was going to PR. There, Like I was not going to be able to run anywhere close to what my fitness level would allow me to run on a decent day. And I knew that. I knew that before I even got to the starting line. And so I showed up at the starting line. I'm like, you know what? It's my first time in Boston. I'm just going to enjoy the experience, not get hurt. I'm going to soak up every bit of Boston that I can. And by God, it was awesome. It was one, it was one of the most amazing races I've ever had. And I was still only 45-ish seconds or something like that. Um, slower than my Boston qualifier that I'd gotten to get there. And it allowed me to requalify again. So I went back this year. <clears throat> but, um, but I had an absolute blast. I didn't walk away from the event going, man, Boston sucks. It's hilly. It's tough. I can't run a good time. It's like, that's not the headspace you want to be in when you get to do something as amazing as your first time in Boston or your first marathon or your first Ironman. Like, you should walk away from those events going, man, that was awesome. I'm a badass. And so being completely wrapped up in the crush in the race, whether that's finish time or finishing position or whatever um, detracts from that a little bit. Number four, we want to look at doing, if it's our first time doing an event, we want to make sure we're not picking the absolute most horrendous course possible uh, for most of us. I've known some athletes over the years that, you know, kind of the George Sheehan's of the world that they're out there to see how much they can suffer. Um, kind of the Steve, Steve Prefontaine approach is really the George Sheehan approach because he read Sheehan. But the concept of the race being an event that allows you to experience monumental suffering so you can see what you're made out of. And if that's your goal, then by all means, pick, go run bad water, go run the gnarliest, nastiest, go run the Barclays Marathons, go pick the nastiest gnarliest race you can find um but if it's your first time doing it for most of us and we're like you know what we want to i want to run this race i want to have a good time i want to experience it and i want to see if it's something i want to do again um then you probably don't want to pick the gnarliest course you can find i actually kind of had a conversation with our couch to 5k group uh just yesterday because watermelon festival um kind of what got me thinking about this today so i saw the shirt the race date is perfectly timed for the end of the Couch to 5K program. It is quite possibly the roughest 5K course I've ever run. Uh, and that includes some really rough courses running, like really rough golf course courses I ran in high school as part of the high school cross country team, you know, road races, whatever. Um, yeah, the Farmerville, Louisiana Watermelon Festival while they give you all the watermelon you can eat when you're done, it's the only race, it's the only 5K I think I've ever done where I could not wear my run, one, I couldn't wear my jersey because it was just way too hot and humid that day. And two, it's a first, the first mile is all downhill. And then you spend two miles getting back to the start line. So yeah, uh, for most of us, Picking a course that is doable, you know, it's our first time doing it, it's our first 5K, we shouldn't pick this Watermelon Festival 5K. A lot of people, did, there were people out there that did it for their first 5K, I haven't seen them again. 
I haven't seen him out in any other road race since. Um, you know, pick one that is doable that you're pretty sure you're going to enjoy and have a good time doing. Because uh, that's why we're out there, right? And the last thing, number five, is give yourself enough time to train for it. Um, a lot of folks, I don't know if it just doesn't occur to us that it takes a while to actually train and get in good enough shape to com successfully complete a long race. Um, but unless you've been training for a while, uh, you probably don't quite have the base fitness required to do you know, anything longer than maybe like a 10K. Um, it just, it takes a good amount of aerobic fitness to get there. Um, and so you got to make sure you give yourself enough time to train. And I, that doesn't mean just be like, all right, I'm going to go, you know, download this free marathon training plan and away we go. And 18 weeks from now, uh, I'll run a marathon. Um, that's a good way, one, that's a good way to get hurt. Um, and that's really kind of the biggest thing. But two, a lot of folks who run, you know, even half marathons, but marathons, Ironman, half Ironman, like those long races, um, you know, if you don't get enough training time in ahead of time, the physical toll it takes on your body can be pretty drastic. Uh, it's some ridiculous percentage. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's like more than 50 or 75% of folks who run an ultra get sick. They completely destroy their body racing because they didn't train enough to do it. Even the people that did train enough to do it get sick. But if you're undertrained, your endocrine system is going to be fried. Your immune system is going to be essentially shut down. And then you're going to get on an airplane and you're going to spend a couple of hours in a tin can with recycled air with a whole bunch of your closest friends that you've never met before getting home. You're probably going to get sick. It's pretty common, actually, for a lot of people when they cross the finish line of a marathon to have a lot of the same biomarkers in their bloodstream as someone having a heart attack. And those markers come from cardiac cell death. What that means is those people were undertrained. Uh, you know, they're demanding more out of that heart tissue than it really was fit enough to provide. Uh, and you, you can run into some trouble. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm a marathon. I love marathoning and ultras. But uh, make sure to put in enough effort on the front end to make sure I'm not getting to that ridiculously bad spot when I cross the finish line. Um, health and safety is a big thing, especially for these long races. So give yourself a long enough time period to train. Uh, my general rule of thumb for these long races is if you can be 80% of your maximal volume uh, before you start training, that's probably good. Uh, and hold that for a while. Not just, okay, I hit 80%. I can train for 12, 16, 18, 20 weeks and run this race. If you, you should probably be at that 80% volume for these long races for a couple of months before you really get into that training plan, which means that actual training for it may take up to a year, uh, you know, despite the 12, 16, 18, 20 week label on your training plan. Um, yeah, that baseline fitness is really important to being successful um, and having a good time and not getting hurt. And those are kind of the big th three things. You want to, you want to have fun, you want to not get hurt, and if you do both of those things, you probably are going to be successful because um, they all kind of go together. So from the top, we want to have fun. That should be the highest priority anytime you're doing one of these races for the first time. And that doesn't matter if it's the mile or Badwater, Western States, or Kona. Like, if it's your first time out there, enjoy it. Soak it up. It's an amazing experience. Don't miss out on that because you're tied up on competitiveness or something. Two, set multiple goals. Multiple goals will help you keep your head in the game as you're doing this. And if it's your first time doing that kind of event, the odds of something going off are higher because you don't have the experience to be like, yes, something's not quite right, account for it early, and then you don't notice it until it's too late. Uh, that's why a lot of first-time marathoners hit the wall pretty hard. They're going just a little too hard, and they don't have the experience of knowing what it's like knowing where that red line is so they can get right up to it without stepping over it and then they hit the wall real hard. Three, 
don't worry about absolutely crushing the course. Um, you can always come back and get revenge on it later. You can always get a course PR, just a PR at the next race. That's fine. You don't have to do it your first time out. You don't have to set a world record your first time attempting a specific distance or course. Four, if it's your first time doing it, pick a course you're pretty sure you can. You would have a good time doing. If you're a real masochist and you just enjoy suffering, by all means, find the hilliest, nastiest, hottest course you can if that's your thing. But for most of us, not pancake flat, go ahead and throw some hills in there. Um, but, you know, ideally, pick it at a time of year. The weather's going to be okay. I don't do it in the dog days of summer, like really nasty, 20 below, freezing rain and sleet and hail. Like, try to... Try to pick a race that at a time is that you know in the spring or the fall, decent weather so you're not miserable while you're out there. Also, make sure it's not super hilly, just you know where you don't have to be a mountain goat to do it. And the last one is give yourself enough time to train. Make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get in good enough shape, and accept that something's going to happen in training, whether it's the holidays thrown off training for a week or Kids are out of school for the summer, throwing a wrench in your plans, or their spring break, or you just get sick, or life happens. You know, it could be the fan, stuff hits the fan at work uh, for a week or two, and that throws a wrench in your ability to get your training in. That's going to happen. When you're talking about training for something for a year, the odds of every single thing lining up right in your schedule, about that big. It can happen. But for most of us, real life is a thing, and quite frankly, is a higher priority to make sure we get our workout in. So accept that. Don't kid yourself it's not going to happen. Build that extra time. So hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell down there. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Share this with your friends. Tell people what you think. Tell me what you think. If there's something you want to hear about, let me know because, uh, yeah, I want to I give you guys content you're looking for. And uh, that way we can all... Uh, yeah, we can get all what we need. Till next time, train smart.